Okay, I'm going to, part of this remodel is, this is called a knockdown texture. They uh, blew it on with a uh, big machine when they first did the house, and they blasted it on. Then they came through with a broad knife like this, or, or even a longer one, and they just flattened everything down. Um, I'm going to be putting like a plaster job over this, is what it's going to look like. But you can blank walls out. and. Normally, I would use my hawk and trowel to blank it out, but I've got my pan and knife with me right now. And I do it with a pan and knife too. It's just that it's, they're again, quicker and less messy with my hawk and trowel. But I'll show you how it's done because a lot of people don't realize that you can do a real wide area with a knife without making a huge mess and leaving big lines and stuff. Anyways, I come up here and I just start laying it on. And you notice I take a little bit off of my knife edge because I don't want it lobbing all over the place too much. And I'm laying it in there. And I start off like this and then as I get towards the bottom my knife gets flatter to the wall as I use the mud. And I'm going right up to the top edge. And I'm trying to lay it on somewhat uniform in its thickness. Okay, that's a huge area, so I'll just come by. I like to go somewhere around the center as a start. Then I come over here. Now, this side I just ran two minutes ago, so I've got to deal with that. Okay, now, from now on, I'm putting pressure on this side of the knife. I'm putting it against this side and leaving it up this way so that there's a very little edge here, so I come across like this. That's pretty good. I'm going to uh, redo this whole wall one more time when I come through with my uh, hawk and trowel. But as you can see, the lines are just minuscule in there. And that's because it's just the technique of, of feathering it. If your mud's kind of thick, you're gonna you're gonna ruin your wrist. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a little bit difficult. But you gotta thin it out a little bit. You can see where that is. You know, it's it's not it's not too thick. So let me do it one more time just to show you here. I'm coming around this heat vent here. I come up here, start laying it in. And I'll just play around that heat bed a little bit. You're going to have obstacles always when you're doing this kind of work. Now you can take a little bit off and spread it over there if you want, because see I'm running out of mud here. Then I want to clean it up a little bit because it's not quite what I'd like to see for a but there you go okay and I come across somewhere in the center I like to make it look real nice and this this one I'm feathering the same way so I'm gonna leave the gouge right there but that's okay. I'm coming through and I'm feathering it see that big gouge I just left but I don't care because I'm gonna keep pushing that gouge until it's gone. If I do, it, it, it's very minimal, uh, and, and that's how you do it. You just keep pushing it to the whatever direction you want to work. You keep doing it that way, and you keep feathering it, and you'll end up with. Uh, I mean, you can blank out huge walls, as you can see right here. That's good. Okay.
Okay, I'm gonna go, I've got all the walls completely finished out now. I did do a little bit of sanding, and the ceiling in this area is already done. I'm doing, I don't even know what you want to call it. It's like a European plaster finish, basically. I'm just using regular uh, drywall, drywall all-purpose mud, though. Anyways, I'm just going to show you the technique I use over here to do it. And you have to do every square inch of the walls to uh, do it. Now, I've used pans and knives and stuff, but I've never got the right technique down with a pan and knife. So far, I've been telling you, when you're using your tools, to try not to leave lap marks or anything like that. And now, I'm going to tell you to leave lap marks. So, I'm just going to show you how I do it. I get started like this, and I come up, and I'm just trying to get a full coverage of, oh, I don't know, maybe, it's hard to say how thick the mud is, maybe it's a sixteenth of an inch thick or something like that, and uh, I'm just kind of getting an area, the corners are actually where I'm doing right now, are the toughest uh, to get started. Anyways. So I come up here, go over that messy box, and it, as you can tell, it takes a lot of mud to do this. Now you can go over it and smooth it if you want. You don't have to. It all depends on how you get your technique down. You don't even have to do the edges really that much, but it does start to dry up on you. Okay, that's that. Now I come in here. And I just, I, my trowel is fairly flat against the wall. And I'm trying to get myself some lap marks, basically. I want it to look like the uh, old European plaster jobs, or I, w I wouldn't say Mexican, because the adobes and stuff like that in Mexico are a lot heavier of a texture. And sometimes when you're coming across, you can skip it like that. And if you see those marks right there, uh, that's another method. If, if you like that kind of a texture, if you don't, uh, and you can tell, I'm just like really easing it in here. And then I'm trying to be consistent with what I'm doing. And to me, I like that. I, I don't need to do any more. Now I'm going to show you one more time. I'm going to blend into that. I keep my mud on the top of the bucket so I don't have to bend over so much. But then I come right back in here and I probably want to use knee pads if you want to save your knees, but I'm actually retired. But uh, I still do this on occasion. Okay, just like that. And you can see how messy it is. And then I come across, and I just, <clears throat> I'm just kind of, it, it's actually the, similar to a technique if you're a, if you're a concrete finisher, you're used to using a, a trowel like this to do your concrete. And it's very similar. You're just using a little bit of an edge there. And what I want to avoid, I'll show you here in a second. I'm coming across here. Maybe I'll put a blob there like that, come across. What I want to avoid is if I start here, watch this, I start here. You see that light across there? That's a no-no because that just doesn't look uniform like the rest of the stuff. So you want to get rid of that. And notice how I'm just twisting my trowel at different angles and stuff like that. And uh, coming up. I can start it there, that's okay. I kind of skip it, it's almost flat. Oh, I got that there. There. That's basically it.